Again, we would like to welcome everyone to our History for Lunch today. It's our second one this month. And again, we're going to highlight a female that broke barriers in reference to our newest exhibit, Women Breaking Barriers in Northeastern North Carolina. And today I have Mr. Marvin Jones and Miss Caroline Stevenson, and they're going to highlight the barriers that Mrs. Katie M. Hart broke in Hertford County. And from, just from what little bit I have heard, I'm very excited about this topic today. And hopefully it will inspire others to go out and make a difference like Miss Katie Hart did in Hertford County and Gates County too. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Jones and Miss Stevenson, and I'm gonna let you begin. Thank you. And Caroline will start off um, Caroline, you, you have some opening remarks, right? Yeah, just a few. Um, first of all, Lori and Museum of the Albemarle uh, and Marvin, I'm glad to join everybody here today. This is um, very exciting. Uh, Mrs. Hart is just one of my uh, heroes or sheroes rather. Um, you know, she was a Hereford County native like myself and like Marvin. I'm very proud to be from here and to serve the people here. And that's what, um, what I'm trying to do through uh, the nonprofit that uh, we founded here in Murfreesboro called the Cultivator uh, Bookmobile. We used to be the Cultivator Bookstore and now we're the Cultivator Bookmobile. And then uh, Marvin's gonna present about Mrs. Hart. And then after that, we can talk more about um, uh, the work that I do, the work that Marvin does uh, with his organization and how we just uh, push to keep uh, the legacy of people like Mrs. Hart alive uh, for future generations. Well, good. I'll talk about my organization, Tawan Discovery, afterward. Uh, we'll get into uh, the slide presentation I have about Mrs. Hart, who I met, I met one time and I've seen a few times. Um, I'd like to be able to share the screen and um, I have permission for that, correct? Yes, sir. Um, apparently I need to, uh, that was one run through we didn't go through. Um, I have to go through, I have to go through preferences apparently to, um, to share the screen. Caroline, could you take up and, and, and talk more while I? Absolutely. I hadn't had to do this. Okay. This is the first Zoom I'm doing on a new computer. So, um, in May of 2020, uh, 2020, um, we closed our bookstore, independent bookstore here in Murfreesboro, which was called the Cultivator Bookstore. We opened in 2016 and we were the only bookstore in an hour's drive in all directions from Murfreesboro. So where Lori is sitting is in Elizabeth City. So that is about an hour away from Murfreesboro. And there are actually two bookstores in Elizabeth City. Um, so that is uh, to the east there. Um, Greenville is to the south of us, which is about an hour away. Um, like Rocky Mount uh, is to the west. And of course, Virginia is to the north. So. We were very sad to close our bookstore uh, due to the pandemic, but what we did uh, very quickly was we transitioned to become a bookmobile. So Katie Hart was our definite inspiration uh, in that so that we could continue our mission of creating greater book access in Northeastern North Carolina. So she, uh, like uh, Marvin is gonna uh, give us more details. She started a bookmobile service here in Hertford County and in Gates County in the 1930s. So this was the woman who was essentially way ahead of her time. Um, you know, she saw the need, which was, you know, how do we educate our students? How do we 
uh, make progress in our communities and among our children. And so that's why she had this vision of starting her bookmobile service. Um, you know, in the 1930s. So she was a real model for us when like what could have been. Um, Mrs. Hart was born around 1899 and in, in Winton and her parent in Hertford County and her parents were from Harrellsville. Um, I would hear about Mrs. Hart growing up and I would see her bookmobile when I was working in my father's store, passing through my village of Coalfield. Um, my house had actually a fairly good amount of books and, and, and my parents provided me us with a lot of magazines and books. And so we were less likely to use her service. And of course, we also used the school library libraries at C.S. Brown. C.S. Brown School in Winton, where Mrs. Hart had also attended, had an elementary library and a high school library uh, room. But what is significant, one significant thing Ms. Hart did was in 1939, she wrote an article for a book. And the article and the essay was called Hereford County Negro Rural Education, and this has been a very valuable piece that she wrote. Um, and she interviewed people about this and described some of the schools. Uh, she described one Sunday school in Harrellsville in 1866. It was run by, by a Ben Morris, who was a, a union sailor of color. And uh, Ben Morris is my great great grandfather. Anyway, he was running a, a, a Sunday school in Harrellsville, and he was a superintendent, taught reading, writing, and spelling. However, I believe he was enslaved um, due to, I can't find any records about him before 1870, um, but yet he was teaching after the war, after his service as a sailor. I've learned this from Mrs. Hart. And among, and there was also, it was superseded by a school, by a, a, a regular school taught by a, a um, another USCT, United States Colored Troop, Trooper named Thomas Collins. And among the students in Harrellsville was Katie Hart's father and my great great grandmother Harriet Morris. Uh, Katie Hart's father was William William D. Askew. Um, the school was called the Lincoln Grove School, and it was her father who gave us this information about the students and the teachers and so forth. And her father went on to, after he finished Lincoln Grove School, he went to the normal school and the state normal school for for people of color established in Plymouth, North Carolina. Uh, this school later became Elizabeth City State University. Anyway, um, Ms. Hart's father taught, again, again, graduated from the Plymouth Normal, and then he taught at two schools in Hertford County. Um, Ms. Hart also collected information on my church's school, Pleasant Plains School. She also wrote about a school in Murfreesboro and some of the students that were there. This is the beginning of black education in Hertford County. Um, so this article that she wrote was, has been very, very valuable. Um, at Pleasant Plains, she, she learned and reported um, that it built the first schoolhouse of color in Hertford County in 1866. Plains Church was already 15 years old. And she listed several of my ancestral uncles on a great, great grandfather who built, who built the schoolhouse. Uh, she, also, she also listed some of the first teachers that arose out of, who, out of uh, in Hertford County. And many of these teachers had gone to Hampton and Shaw. She also mentioned one particular teacher, Lydia Warwick, who was educated in Boston, who came from Philadelphia and taught in Hertford County. Um, again, she was born in 1900 to William D. and Texana Askew of, of Harrellsville. And she probably graduated around 1917, Mrs. Hart, that is from Waters Normal Institute. 
Um, according to the 1940 census, Mrs. Hart had listed, of have, listed as having three years of college and a, 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 a dissertation that Caroline will talk about uh, that she shared with me recently will mention all the colleges she had she went on and 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 uh, attended. Um, Mrs. Hart's mother was a midwife in Winton, and she was also a leader. Uh, there was a there was a document uh, found that she was part of a women's missionary union, and she was a leader in that union. Uh, at the, um, and the union was part of the West Roanoke Baptist Association. And again, she graduated from Waters Training School in Winton, which is now the C.S. Brown High School STEM in Winton. And all of my family attended that high school as well. Um, after she finished college, she was teaching in my village of Coalfield, which is three miles from Winton and at the Philippi School. Uh, she was my father's first teacher around 1921 and 22. My father remembers wearing her clothes during a school assembly. This is like a one, two room schoolhouse um, that was established after the Civil War. And my father is, is wearing Mrs. Hart, Mrs. Hart's clothes for a, a, a little school assembly at Philippi. Um, she in night about a year later she becomes a jeans teacher and the jeans program was a national program directed for to improve the teaching levels of and abilities of black teachers in the south it it, it was um and so she was a, a became a teacher supervisor in Hertford county and she was partially funded by the jeans foundation um she learned new techniques and whatever and passed them on to teachers. And she also raised through uh, students and families $33,000 to improve the education for black students in Hereford County. Um, in 1940, Mrs. Hart and her husband, the Reverend H.H. H. Hart, who I don't, Harvey was, I believe his first name, um, built a very nice house in Winton um, at the intersection of Pine and Murphy Street. Her father and her sister lived with them in 1940. And Reverend Hart had a church in Durham and he commuted home and Reverend, and Reverend Hart died in 1953. And he's buried in Winton next to Mrs. Hart. Mrs. Hart was also a teacher, a librarian, and a civic leader. Um, I'm sorry I can't share this photograph of her uh, wearing the uniforms of the of, of the Golden Circle, which is part of the Eastern Star uh, of a Masonic group. Um, now, for decades, numerous church organizations benefited from a man named John Neely, who is still living in Winton. Uh, they, John Ely was a choral director, and South Winton Baptist Church constantly needed pianists for its youth choir. And Mrs. Hart and Dicey Smith, who ran the funeral home in Winton. Katie Hart was my music teacher. She taught me piano. And I attribute to her that I can't play the piano today because she wouldn't let me play what I wanted to. She had me playing classics and spirituals and, well, church music. I wouldn't play Tommy Dawson's Boogie Woogie. Uh, but Mrs. Hart was, uh, she had the book mobile. She was a librarian. She started the library there. Um, at that time, blacks couldn't go to the white library. And so she started one. And uh, she would bring that book mobile around and you could get a couple of books from it on the pretense of, uh, you're going to give one to your brother because it's like one book a person. And I would always get two or three, and I'd say, James needs one, Josephine needs one. And uh, to get another one, you'd have to bring those books back, tell us some of what was in them. I mean, it was virtually a quiz. You know, you had to prove you read it to Mrs. Hart. 
so when she built the, before the library was constructed, because I watched that under construction, she had the bookmobile before the library. And then once she got the library, then you could go in the library, but you had the same conditions, one book. You could stay in there and read all you wanted to, but you want to take it home, took one book. And uh, when you brought that book back, you could be aware that you would have to tell Miss Hart something about what was in that book. I always wondered if she had actually read all those books. And, and if she hadn't, how would she know if I wasn't making that up? But I was afraid to try it. I just had the sense that she knew everything in every one of those books. We bought property from her. My wife and I built a house on Murphy Street. We bought that land from Mrs. Hart. And she owned that whole block at one time, or virtually the whole block. And she sold lots off, little by little, the Jarrett's and then some others. Um, but she was, she was a staunch church goer. And she had a very good singing voice, louder than most, but very good. And if the song came on that she liked, she would blow the church out with it. She knew that Lennon would do so. She sang at most of the funerals uh, by request. Somebody would want Mrs. Hart to sing a song for her. Well, always on the lookout for new talent. Mrs. Hart had taught John Ely's sister, who in turn taught her younger brother. Um, and Mrs. Smith eventually paid for half of John, of John Ely's lessons with Mrs. Hart, and his first musical chair was at South Winton. So John Ely was a farmer all his life, but his other career and avocation was that of a choral uh, director, a very popular choral director and a very beloved choral director. And Mrs. Hart played a significant role in his life. In 1938, Ms. Hart had already had in her office, which might have been at the Board of Education or it might have been at C.S. Brown School, she had a library that she established. Uh, she just got bookshelves and created a library, uh, a lending library, and around 1932. Well, in 1938, she parlayed that into the first library for people of color in Hereford County, and it was a bookmobile. Uh, this 1938 Ford served also at the request of the state of North Carolina, it served Gates County as well. Gates County is right across the Chowan River from Winton. It was independently funded with, county, with the counties contributing some of the money. And of course, she contributed as well. Many of the, and she made a lot of, she made quite a few book purchases out of her own pocket. Um, again, she started the library in 1931 while a jeans teacher with funds she raised and donated, and she persuaded people and institutions to donate books. Um, she brought library land herself for the library building she later established and deeded it to the town of Winton so that the National Youth Association, which was founded by Franklin D. Roosevelt, could fund the building. She also borrowed $4,200 in 1965 to expand the library that was built in uh, a few years after she acquired the 1938 bookmobile. Uh, again, Hertford County and the town of Winton contributed to the annual expenses of her libraries. And again, the state library asked her to expand into Gates County. And it's estimated that she spent about $1,000 for books and other expenses. Mrs. Hart's service ended in 1869 with her retirement and her library merging with the Albemarle Public Library or Regional Library in Winton. A few years after the bookmobile start, she opened a, a stationary library building on Murphy Street in Winton and she encouraged everyone to visit, read and borrow books. The library was expanded in 1865, 1965, and of course she borrowed $4,200 for that. And less than 10 years ago, it was converted to a home. So it's now a private home. Um, our local paper, the News Herald, published an article about Mrs. Hart at the time of her retirement. And I wish I could show you that. Um, Mrs. Hart died in, 1984, 
and her husband and she are buried on Factory Street at the intersection of Murphy Street and Winton. She's buried not very far from her home and, and um, uh, I occasionally stop by the grave and I've cleaned it off a couple of times as well. Um, about 10 years ago or more, I remembered that someone had her 1938 bookmobile and I did a search of newspaper articles and I found the article and I found the owner. It was a Virginian pilot article and I found the owner and I looked him up and he allowed me to see the, like, the bookmobile against the 1934 station, 1938 station wagon. Uh, it's in excellent shape. I don't know if, if it runs. It doesn't need to run. It just needs to be in this, on display. It has shelves inside. And um, the owner had it stored away, and he brought it out and, for me to see. And I photographed it um, from all angles, inside, from the back, and from the front, and so on. Um, and And... Caroline and I and others are looking for the means to bring the bookmobile back to Hertford County. Uh, if anybody has any ideas on how to do that or other suggestions, we are very open to it. Um, again, I wish I could share these photographs with you. Um, yeah, absolutely, Marvin. We're definitely interested in trying to get her original bookmobile back back home, so to speak. It's really amazing and a miracle, quite frankly, that you know her original um, vehicle from the '30s, late '30s. So now, you know, it's close to 100 years old. And it, and it may be the only African American bookmobile still in existence. There were others in North Carolina, but this may be the only one in the in, in the nation that's still in existence. That is very so, true. So it's, so it's highly significant. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, the so uh, Mrs. Hart's bookmobile was a lending service, um, which uh, obviously she had regular visits and stops at uh, a lot of the Rosenwald schools in Hereford County and in Gates County. Um, Mr. Ben, uh, Watford, who is a fairly famous um, uh, Hereford County native. He is also a potter, at, like a pottery potter and an educator. Uh, he has great stories in his book about uh, Katie Hart <laughs> um, coming to his house uh, outside of Wenton and asking uh, for him to return the books that he had borrowed from the bookmobile because uh, they were so precious to him. And he just, he loved them and he had hidden them away under his bed, apparently. Right, he was sporting books. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he got a, a whipping behind that probably, uh, but it shows the power of books, how important they were to him and how, you know, book access is. Now you shouldn't uh, mention he got a whip and if he didn't, he wouldn't have gotten it from Mrs. Hart now. <laughs> oh yeah, not her, no, his mother. I'm sure his mother, because. <laughs> But uh, he, he um, wrote about Mrs. Hart in, uh, he and Dr. Dudley Flood have a book called Can't Fall Off the Floor, um, which uh, uh, is an amazing book. Uh, I'll throw that in the chat box too, so people can look it up. And we actually have a few copies for sale through The Cultivator, if anybody's interested. Um, you know, they speak, both speak very highly of her. Um, Paul Nielsen has written in the chat is the owner of the bookmobile willing to sell it? I did offer. I did offer um, to purchase um, the book, and I did. I did give him a price, and um, he still reneged. And well, he still he 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 was reluctant to sell it. He said he'd be willing to loan it to. Hereford County, if it had a if it had a decent place for store for display and storage, and I did talk to the local library board about it, or one or two people, but it went nowhere. Also, 
I had no, it kind of helps to have a committee behind you when you make a request like this. And at the time there were just two of us, um, you, you kind of need to have some support behind you when you request that at the time, well, a high school was built, was planning to build a new library, which never happened. And I was saying it'd be nice to acquire the bookmobile, put it in there and for, for stories to be read from the back of the bookmobile to children, because you can just open up the back and a librarian or storyteller can sit it, sit on the on the back gate and just and just read stories and have her and have her bookmobile in there. But uh, no decent place of a rose and our economy has gone downhill since the the five, six or eight years or whenever it was that I talked to the owner about it. Um, but Mr. Nielsen, if you think you can provide su substantial power towards this end, please contact us, <laughs> and, and we can we can re we can renew negotiations. But we do need to figure out where it needs to be displayed. Perhaps it can be displayed at the Museum of the Albemarle on loan until such happens. Uh, um, um, but again, Mr. Nelson, if you think you can play a significant, anybody can play a role, a significant role, please let us know. Um, I did want to give a shout out to the um, Lend a Hand Book Mission in Boston, um, Massachusetts. Yes, thank you. Um, we have some Lend a Hand uh, folks who joined us for this presentation, and I'm very thankful that they took the time out to do so. So. Um, uh, in a um, uh, in a lot of the research that Marvin and I have read, uh, we discovered that uh, Mrs. Hart got books from the Lend a Hand Book Mission uh, in Boston um, almost 100 years ago, so in the 30s and and beyond. So they um, supported her mission here in Northeastern North Carolina then and I'm uh, very proud to say they're still supporting uh, book access here in uh, Northeastern North Carolina. Um, Cultivator Bookmobile has uh, received a grant, recently received a grant from them. So we're very happy, we're very proud um, to that they see the importance of continuing her mission um, and just uh, the importance of getting books into the hands of folks in our rural community. So we're so thankful uh, for the opportunity to work with them just as she did, so. Uh, Adriana Bennett has asked, if, can the slides be sent out to participants so that we can see the pictures of Mrs. Hart? Um, I'll see what we can do, Ms. Bennett. Um, I am so sorry that there's been a failure here. Um, I've been spending all week getting this computer and, 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 and software, you know, getting things, the computer was a problem for two or three days and then getting software transferred over and working. And the last piece was just solved an hour or two ago. I can now do my accounting on this computer. <laughs> and so, and so now we have a new problem. Now I see we got a new problem with it. Um, I know we have some photos of Mrs. Hart and her bookmobile, so I'll see if I, I will have to access them another way, but I will see if we cannot um, send them out today to, um, that we have on file, that we used in our exhibit here at the Museum of the Outer Mall. And I'll be glad to work with you, Lori. Okay. And I... Uh, we have a few that we have shared in the past, so uh, we'll definitely post some on the Cultivator Facebook and Instagram and Twitter pages after this presentation as well. Um, I think, you know, to, to me, uh, Mrs. Hart is such an inspiration in so many ways because um, she was from Hereford County, because she was a, a woman um, because obviously she grew up and lived in this time in the Jim Crow South, you know, and despite kind of the separate 
and unequal, you know, she really, really, uh, she had this drive and this ambition and uh, just this need and power to serve the people. And that is just, it's like, if she, she could do it a hundred years ago, what are we doing now? You know, that's really with the cultivator. That's why it's kind of for, for us by any means necessary. You know, this can be done. It should be done and it will be done, you know, despite, you know, what, whatever is in our way. Cause you know, our, the people here were worth it back then they're worth it now. So we're going to, she really inspires us to keep moving every day. Yeah, we're working to empower our area, not just Hertford County, but the Roanoke Jawan area. Ms. And Mrs. Hart was a benefit to the Roanoke Jawan area. Um, she oh, she didn't just she also loaned books to anybody. There was a a a a a, a white boy who would get books from Mrs. Hart. He later became a newspaperman in in uh, Wilmington. And so he would get books from her as well. She didn't, she didn't discriminate. Uh, her service was for, her, her Hertford County Color Library was for everyone. Yeah, I've heard that too uh, and read that also, that it was not just for African-Americans. It was for whoever. Yeah. Okay, so I do have one question. Um, oops, it jumped up. Hold on just a second. Did you find any documentation of visits from Linda Hand's staff? We know two executive secretaries made trips through the South in the 30s and 40s. Oops, I'm sorry. Someone answered that. I just answered, but maybe uh, Marvin knows because um, I don't, but I can look. So. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, but that's good to know because that means it, that's some homework for me. I love homework. So this is good. And um, before the call, actually, Marvin and Lori and I were talking about Mrs. Hart and how like there's still plenty more to know and there's still plenty more to find out about her. It's just the time, taking the time and just connecting the dots. You know, um, a lot of uh, African-American history is not as well documented as the predominant history, um, but it doesn't mean it's not out there. It just means uh, keep keep digging, keep keep swimming, keep looking. So. Well, today, well, today there's a significant boom in African American historical research. Yes, there are a lot of programs that are available, a lot of books that are available. There are a lot of uh, amateur genealogists who are getting trained. I'm a member of the African American Historical and Genealogical Society. And um, I'm a member of the Washington DC chapter. I've, sp I've spoken to nine chapters from Greensboro to Baltimore. Uh, and the Washington DC area has five chapters alone. And so, uh, there's a real boom in that there's more research, people's family research, is, uh, their, their family research is yielding a lot of new information. Yes. And a, a lot of these amateurs are learning to, learning to write down what they've learned, present, design, promote, publish, lecture, um, and that's what Caroline and I've done in, 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 in the Hertford County area and, and particularly with Mrs. Hart. Um, I wanted to talk about my organization, Tawan Discovery Group, and our mission is to research, document, preserve, and present the history of the Winton, particularly the Winton Triangle area of Hertford County, which is in the center of the county. It's Winton, it's the land ownership, it's the, it's the, mainly mixed race people, who, uh, landowners whose land ownership traverses the Winton Coalfield, Ahaska area. But you, we can't do just that history without getting to other parts of the area and other peoples. Um, we, have, we have quite a few lectures. We've done a stage production in Ahaska on the Winton Triangle. We've, uh, we've, Nom successfully nominated eight 
North Carolina Highway Historical Markers. One is going up at some point in, in Elizabeth City for Wilder's Raid. Uh, we are expecting, we're expecting news about two other nominations we've sent in, um, hopefully making it 10. Um, we've, we've written, We've written articles with more to write. We've uh, assisted a lot of histor history professionals given and, uh, in producing their works. We've given tours to about 10 history professionals, um, Winton Triangle tours, other Winton Triangle, uh, excuse me, tours, other Winton Triangle. And our history dates from 1584. Yeah. Because that's when the English first heard about the Choanoke people and the Chowan River is named after the Choanoke people. And I'm a Choanoke descendant too, I like to mention. And so we have a long history. We have a lot of documents from the Civil War because we had so many of our soldiers in the Winton Triangle and elsewhere who were, who were in the, the Union and, their pen, and they created a lot of pension folders. And I've gone through about 35 pension folders of our soldiers, and it's yielded tremendous loads of information. So Marvin does these great tours of the Winton Triangle area of Hereford County. And, um, you know, we're Northeastern North Carolina, um, including Hereford County, like we tend to be very invisible and forgotten by even a lot of the rest of the state of North Carolina. So mm -hmm. I'm saying this to say, come see us. <laughs> we would love to have you visit Hereford County and see yep. what we see the Winton Triangle tour and see these places and hear about these people and, you know, put your feet on the ground here because, you know, it's, it is definitely worth an investment of your, your time and money. Um, Cause this is a great place. Um, and, you know, Marvin, like there's a long history here, particularly if you go, you know, include our Native American history, which is so incredible. And in which we do. And, and there's still projects to be, to be done. Mm -hmm. um, one, of my, one of my projects is photographing. I'm a, I'm a documentary photographer. That's been my business in Washington. Um, I've, I've been photographing Winton Triangle buildings, significant buildings. And I recently got the idea because I acquired a very powerful battery powered flash battery powered flash unit to start photographing some of these buildings at dusk uh, just so I can get enough light in the sky but the main light will come from the flash units uh, some that I already had and then, then this new this new this new acquisition that was uh, 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 that came from a, a late colleague um, we scan a lot of documents. I mean, we have we have about ninety thousand computer files on the Winton Triangle: photographs, video interviews, audio interviews, documents scanned, photographs taken, uh, some of, some of everything, and um, and and the collection keeps growing. Uh, it, it's like a bottomless pit of information in, in, the, in, the, in the Hertford County area. And our website is chawandiscovery.org, C-H-O-W-A-N, discovery.org. So do we have any questions out there from our audience today? There was, there's one question from Paul Nielsen. Do you know the name of the boy that got books and later became the newspaper man in Winton? I'd have to look that up. Um, the article, I'd have to read the article. I'd have to, I'd actually have to look that up. Um, I probably should have included it in the slide presentation. Thanks for bringing that up. I'm putting in the chat box a link to the Dudley Flood Ben Watford book Can't Fall Off the Floor that mentions her. Um, if I can type. <laughs> there we go. Okay. 
And um, as we mentioned earlier, Mrs. Hart is in the Women Breaking Barriers exhibit here at the Museum of the Abermall. So please come and visit because we had over, I think there's around 120 women that were submitted for this exhibit. We were not able to have everyone in the actual exhibit that you see with your um, eyes. However, we do have a TV screen that we highlight ladies on too that has served in various fields where they have all broken barriers. Um, again, Mrs. Oops, we do have another question that just popped up that um, Mr. Eddie Davis from Charlotte, he, um, you mentioned that Ms. Hart graduated from C.S. Brown High School. I think the C.S. Brown joined the 1911 educational tour led by Bur Booker T. Washington. Um, Dr. Brown, who's the founding principal of our school, Calvin Scott Brown, is in a photograph with Booker T. Washington uh, during that taken, taken when, when Washington made that tour. Uh, Dr. Brown was, when Dr. Brown died in 1936, several college presidents came to his funeral. He almost had the standing of a college president. Mm -hmm. um, Book, Booker T. Washington was never a college president. He was a school principal, but he was, but he had built Tuskegee to this world famous reputation in his lifetime. And Dr. Brown had sort of a more regional reputation having built Waters Training School, which was originally Chawan Academy. He had built it to, to a reputation where you had students coming in from Virginia and from other counties to, to be educated and, and living in Winton. Um, and so it's significant that Dr. Brown would have been at that meeting with Booker T. Washington. I understand the photograph was taken at the home of Representative Butterfield's grandfather. I've and, not heard that. That's cool though. Uh, um, so also Dr. Brown went on, was president for 39 years of the Lot Carey Foreign Baptist Mission. In 1917, around the time that Mrs. Hart graduated from Waters Training School, Dr. Brown, uh, through Lot Carey, established a mission in Haiti. And um, two years ago, I went, uh, three years ago, uh, I've done a lot of documentary work in Haiti. And three years ago, I met with one of the Lot Carey missionaries on the centennial of the founding of the mission and, and present, presented donations and, 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 and a photograph of Dr. Brown uh, in, in a small celebration of that centennial. But that mission is also to be found in Africa and India. The, the mission, um, like Carrie, still exists, it's still operating. And, 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 and this is, this is who, who educated Mrs. Hart. And I want to add that the historic campus of C.S. Brown Waters Training School Chowan um, Academy Institute um, is still um, uh, existing in Winton. Um, so the uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Marvin, the school buildings that she would have gone to are not there anymore. However, I think the Rosenwald um, Auditorium uh, era building from uh, the 20s is still standing. Yes, that, that the, the Brown Hall, the 1926 Brown Hall, which is a Rosenwald funded building exists. Um, I don't think... Well, that well, the first building still exists. It's across the road. It's That's been, right. and then that building exists. That, that is the very first building. It's still standing. It's not really in use, although um, the the local masons were using had owned it. It was moved moved off campus actually. That's right. That's right. And 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 and, and then a. Uh, a 
uh, an Erzats Indian tribe. Uh, somebody started up an Indian tribe, and, uh, and I think they were the last to use it, and nobody's heard of them then since. Uh, Might have been a for, for profit effort that failed. <laughs> um, so, so the campus it approaches the size of a small college. Mm -hmm. It really does. And so um, gymnasium, a cafeteria, uh, the high school building, um, Morehouse Hall is still standing, even though it's no longer two and a half stories high, it's now one story high. The, that building existed in her time. And it was, it was really the boys' dormitory. It's now the Office of Aging for Hertford County, uh, the headquarters and events happening there as well. Uh, if you want to learn quilting, you can learn quilting there, for example. You can exercise there. You can have meals there. And so there are at least three buildings, two buildings that existed, that still exist mm -hmm. during that, that was there in her time a, as a student. Yeah, yeah. At and um, obviously when she was uh, the super school supervisor and when she was teaching, she most likely interacted with Brown Hall. Oh, definitely. Because she was regular. Yeah. yeah, definitely because she was a, a, a teacher supervisor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All, it's, the, uh, all the teachers in the county had to know her, Mrs., Mrs. Hart, <laughs> all of them. Be on your P's and Q's. That's uh, right. Yeah, it's an incredible um, campus. There's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of possibility there. Um, it, there's a lot of work to be done. However, you know, a lot of the buildings that Marva mentioned, the cafeteria, the gymnasium, the elementary uh, school building, there, uh, even Brown Hall right. uh, are not in the best shape because these are buildings that have a lot of age on them. Um, and you know, one thing about being a tier one county in North Carolina is we don't have all the resources that a lot of other parts of the state or other counties have. So, you know, it's uh, this incredible institution which produced incredible people like uh, Mrs. Hart. You know, it's still it's still in existence, but it's it struggles. You know, it's struggling right now. You know, uh, well, yeah, the county is economically declining and we are depopulating. In fact, mm -hmm. in fact, our neighboring counties, with the exception of Gates, are depopulating. Yes, correct. And so, and so this is what Caroline and I and others are up against, but we are undeterred and um, we, we want to maintain the value that Hertford County has. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you come, you might not really be able to pick out many of the things that we talk about. You may not be able to see or appreciate all that we can show you. You do need someone who is knowledgeable to explain to you the history and the importance of all the things that, that we have in Hertford County. I mean, we have probably the only Black fairgrounds in the country. It has a half mile racetrack. Mm -hmm. And we no longer have a fair, but the fairgrounds are still there and a husky. Yeah. Um, um, and and that, that, was, that was a Winton Triangle uh, creation. Um, everybody was involved in that. Uh, I still have five shares in the, in, in, in the, in the fairground association uh, in my file cabinet. <laughs> and so, uh, and I'm sure my father's shares are somewhere in his file cabinets once we go through them. Um, we, had, we had airplane owners. We had two airfields, uh, private airfields in the 1950s. Uh, I've counted about 37 stores owned by Winton Triangle people. Um, at least nine Joneses in my fa my family had 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 nine stores, and my father had a popular store that I worked in. I was glad to work in. You know, it was a great experience working in T.W. Jones's General Merchandise, right at the in right in Midtown Coalfield, which is really just one intersection. <laughs> And so um, 
it's quite a story in, oh, in, yeah. in telling about Hereford County's people of color. Absolutely. I think we have a couple more questions, Marvin. Yes. So, yes. Mr. Um, Paul Nelson, how did you find out that the bookmobile still wasn't in existence? And were you surprised of its condition when you saw it? Where, um, where in VA is it? Um, my father, Topper Jones, <laughs> talked about, he always talked about the wonderful things that were going on. He talked about Ms. Hart. He had been a student, his first grade teacher and, and second grade teacher, taught him in first and second grade. And he showed me or told me about the story. I, I saw it maybe in the 1980s or early 90s. And then years later, I looked up the story online and that's how I found out about the owner and its condition. So I looked up the owner and the owner is in the Outer Banks area. Um, and he agreed to take it out for me so I could see it in the sunlight. And I was amazed that it was in such beautiful condition. It has been restored. Um, he, he bought it. He bought it when it was work, when it was in a lumber yard. You, it was being used to haul things around in, in a large lumber yard. I don't. Even, I'm not even sure if it even had tags on it by that time. It was just hauling things. But it does not look like it has been abused. It, it's in good shape. It's it's ready to present. Very okay. So um, I'm going. Ask, did, I, did I ask, did I answer everything? Yes, sir, because he wanted to know how you learned about, how, how you learned that the bookmobile existed. Again, it's research. Yes. You so, know, there's an old joke. There's a joke <laughs> that was, there were, uh, there was a group of, there was a group of jazz musicians lined up against the wall in, in, in Manhattan and a young woman uh, is, is walking past them and she stops and says, do you know how to get to Carnegie Hall? And they all answered, practice. <laughs> so it took research. <laughs> yes. That's a good one. So, um, so I'm going to ask just one more time for our guests today if they have any questions, any more questions. And then we did have a few guests to respond to us where they were coming from today. So we do have, um, I know we have Charlotte and um, like I said, I believe we have two guests all the way from Charlotte today. And then we also have Boston area joining in us today too. So we are very fortunate that we, um, COVID has not been, um, the greatest um, adventure that we I have experienced in my lifetime, or it has not been an adventure that I would like to experience again, but yet COVID has offered us the opportunities to think outside of the box so that we can bring um, presenters in, such as Mr. Jones and Ms. Stevenson, and then we can have guests join us from all over. So it has had its advantage, um, having to go virtual has had its advantages because of COVID that we probably would not have stepped outside. But again, we would like to thank everyone for joining us today. We would like to thank Mr. Jones and Ms. Stevenson. And as I can say, if you're not a member of Cultivator Bookstore on Facebook, I highly suggest that you become one because um, they are always posting. Um, if you're looking for what might be happening around Hertford County or opportunities in Hertford County, um, you can definitely go to Cultivator um, Facebook page and um, see the wonderful job that they are doing to spread the love of books in Hartford County and the surrounding areas. So again, thank you to everyone for joining us today. And we will be back the first Wednesday of March. So please visit our website and we will have that link. Thank you so much. And it was a for, pleasure. Thank you for bringing us together. Yes. Thank you. All right. Stay safe. Right. Take care. Yes. All everyone right. have a great day. And I hope to hear from all of you. Yes, Take sir. <laughs> right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.